In his speech of 21535 and other utterances, the Fuhrer and Reich's Chancellor has stated that the stipulations of the Versailles Treaty and the Locarno Pact regarding the demilitarized zone are being observed. Do you find that? And you also find these preparations include, in particular, the following. Preparation for the liberation of the Rhine. Oh, nein. Hier irren Sie sich außerordentlich. Oh, no. Here you have made a great mistake. The original phrase, and this alone is the point in question, is C. Preparation for the clearing of the Rhine. It is a purely technical preparation that has nothing at all to do with the liberation of the Rhineland. Those were general preparations for mobilization, such as every country makes, and not for the purpose of the occupation of the Rhineland. But were of a character which had to be kept entirely secret from foreign powers. Ich glaube, mich nicht zu erinnern, I do not think I can recall reading beforehand the publication of the mobilization preparations of the United States. The last question which I asked last night, referring to the mobilization preparations for the Rhineland, as shown by the official transcript, was this. <coughs> but of a character which had to be kept entirely secret from foreign powers. The answer was, I do not believe I can recall the publication of the preparations of the United States for mobilization. Now, representing the United States of America, I am confronted with these choices, to ignore that remark and allow it to stand for people who do not understand our system, or to develop at considerable expense of time, its falsity, or to answer it in rebuttal. The difficulty arises from this, Your Honor, that if the witness is permitted to volunteer statements and cross-examination, there is no opportunity to make objections until they are placed in the record. I respectfully submit that if the ruling of the tribunal that the defendant may volunteer. Uh, questions of this kind is to prevail. The control of these proceedings is put in the hands of this defendant. And the United States is substantially denied its right of cross-examination under the Charter because cross-examination cannot be effective under this uh, kind uh, of procedure. Uh, are, are you submitting to the tribunal uh, that uh, the witness has got to answer every question, yes or no, and wait until he's re-examined for the purpose of making any explanation at all. I think that is the rule of cross-examination in ordinary circumstances, that a witness, if the question admits of it, must answer. And if the explanation, if there are relevant explanations, now if it, let me come back to the specific problem I have right here this morning. Uh, here is an answer given which the tribunal now rules is irrelevant. But uh, we had no opportunity to object to it. The tribunal had no opportunity to rule upon it. Had counsel asked, did you ever hear of the United States publishing its uh, uh, statements of uh, mobilization? Of course, we would have objected. The difficulty is that the tribunal loses control of these proceedings. If the defendant, in a case of this kind, where we all know uh, propaganda is one of the purposes of the defendants, is permitted to put his propaganda in, and then we have to meet it afterwards. I really feel, I really feel that the United States is deprived of the opportunity of effective cross-examination if this is the procedure. Surely, surely it's making too much of uh, a sentence which the witnesses said about whether the United States makes its uh, mobilization orders public or not. Surely that's not a matter of any very great importance. Let me uh, do that, Your Honor, at once. 
every country uh, keeps a certain things secret, surely it would be much wiser to uh, ignore a statement of that sort. But as to the general rule, uh, the tribunal will now consider the matter. I have already laid down what I believe to be the rule, and I think with the assent of the tribunal, but I will uh, ascertain. Uh, let me say that I agree with Your Honor that as far as the United States is concerned, we're not worried about anything this witness can say about us. And we expected plenty. Uh, the point is, do we answer these things or do we leave them? The, the point is the control of this trial. And it does seem to me that this is the beginning of this trial getting out of hand, if I may say so, if we do not have control of this situation. Uh, I, I trust the tribunal will pardon my earnestness in presenting this. I think it's a very vital thing. So I, I, I've never heard it suggested that uh, the counsel for the prosecution had got to answer every irrelevant observation which is made in cross-examination. Uh, that would be true in a private litigation. But I, I trust the court is not unaware uh, that outside of this courtroom is a great social question of the revival of Nazism. And that one of the purposes here of the defendant Goering, I think he'd be the first to admit, is to revive and perpetuate it by propaganda from this trial table if possible. <coughs> Mr. Justice Jackson, <coughs> the tribunal considers that the rule which it has laid down is the only possible rule, and that uh, the witness must be confined strictly to answering the question directly where the question admits of a direct answer, and that he must not uh, make his explanation before he gives a direct answer. But after having given a direct answer to any question which admits of a direct answer, he may make a short explanation. And that he is not to be uh, confined simply to making direct answers, yes or no, and leaving the explanation until his uh, counsel puts it to him in cross-examination. In re -examination. Uh, as to this uh, a particular uh, observation of the defendant. Uh, the defendant ought not to have uh, referred to the United States, but uh, it is uh, a matter which I think you might well ignore. I shall bow to the ruling, of course.